turn the other way. You don't need to see that. At least that's how the Australian government feels. Recently, there was a stabbing in a church of a bishop, Mar Mari Emanuel, who has created quite a following online through shorts and videos and that kind of thing. And a lot of people respect the guy. And a Muslim extremist ran up and stabbed the guy on the footage. Now, this footage has been kept up on X, formerly known as Twitter. And, well, Australia has a problem with that because, of course, Australia has laws in place to protect you from yourself, from the truth, from events. And interestingly, Australia's so-called e-safety commissioner, Julie Inman Grant, unelected official, mind you, has come out against X and Meta saying that they should remove footage of the attack because it might incite hatred. And we'll get to all that in a second. So, of course, Elon Musk was in the crosshairs of this commissar, but she's not the only one defending this whole thing. And, of course, the prime minister has come out against Elon Musk, pressed against him because, of course, Elon Musk is evil billionaire establishment in Australia's eyes. And Australian Senator Jackie Lambie charged that Musk is creating hatred and ignoring requests to remove harmful content. She said, I think he's a social media knob with no social conscience. He has absolutely no social conscience. Someone like that should be in jail and the key be thrown away. That bloke should not have a right to be out there on his own ideology platform and creating hatred, showing all this stuff out there to our kids and doing all the rest. Do you notice a couple things there? He's not complying with Australian law, supposedly. And so, of course, the prime minister is saying, well, he thinks he's above Australian law. He's not dictated by Australian law because he is in a sovereign nation and does business in a sovereign nation. Now, this senator, did you notice that vein of he shouldn't have a right to do this thing because I don't like how he's doing it? In Australia, we've all looked at Australia, especially through COVID. This attitude in Australia is very much a we are going to tell you what's good for you. We're going to tell you what's bad for you. We are going to be in control of that. And you don't have a right to determine for yourself. We will determine for you whether or not you have the right to say what you want to say. This censorship idea, we've watched it in America in several different ways, but I find it interesting that, of course, what is the major point that they're trying to make in all of this? That keeping a video up of a Muslim extremist doing something bad to a Christian might incite hatred against Muslims. What about the hatred that was incited against the bishop? Do we care about that? Do, do, we, do we understand that? Not really. It's more important to go after Elon Musk because the footage is up there. But you notice how they're saying the truth, allowing the truth to be out in the public, in the present, may create issues in other areas. That's funny. It actually gets down to the deepest psychology of what's going on here is the truth is dangerous. You can't have the truth out there. We have to protect people from the truth. And I think they're kind of ratting out themselves in a sense because what they're saying is we know people can be driven in certain directions merely by being told something or shown something. And what they're saying is they fear that so much. They fear the possibility or potential of people moving in mass that they're willing to restrict truth in order to protect themselves. It's this whole idea of fear and safety. They want safety. They want to they prey on your fear and offer you safety and say, we're just going to tell you you don't have the right to do it because then everybody will be more safe. And truth dies a slow, agonizing death in the dark. And this is, this is something where I was listening to something earlier about this concept of how easy it is to get people to move in one way or another. And you'll notice the progressive side of things, they're always switching the goalposts. You never know where they're going to come from. And so what might be okay today is not okay tomorrow. 
And one of the things it does is you get so tired of the jump everywhere that you just, you acquiesce to it. You don't, whatever, I submit. What it, I, I just want to be safe. I just want to be peaceful. And so the truth dies. And this is why supporting the truth, making sure the truth gets out there, making sure it's clear and in the public is so vital. But even more so, for you, watch it and, and you're going to be like, that's a weird connection, but follow me here. When you look at a situation like this, you can stand on principle or you can stand on what I'm being told. If you stand on principle, you look at it and you go back to the principles that you have and you can stand on a better foundation. If you stand on social conscience, as this senator said, the no social conscience, well, all of a sudden you're tossed by the waves of, well, what is the society trying to say or do or want me to be for them? Instead, what you need to do is have a clear line of principle and foundational belief that informs you through all things because you'll be less likely to get skewed this way or that. Scripture is, is replete with that idea. James 1, 5 through 8. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Why won't we receive? Because we're not willing to actually receive the truth. Now, if we're going to God for wisdom, and we set out this, this foundational piece that God's wisdom is truth, that anything that counteracts it is a lie, isn't true, is illusory, is wrong, then when you have wisdom from God, you have something foundational to stand on. If you don't take that wisdom, but instead you're doubting, you know, ah, I don't know, maybe the world's right about this, you'll be double-minded. You, you won't hold to the principle, right? So bring that back into this type of situation. If you don't hold to the principle, if you don't hold to the foundation, if you don't look at every situation and go, okay, what is the principle to answer this problem, as opposed to how do I answer this problem, whether or not I've got a principle. And progressivism is especially driven by what's the answer for the moment in a relative way. And they don't tend to believe that there is deep-seated truths that inform us. It's more we're creating our truths as we go along because a different situation might need a different truth. And I'm not trying to overgeneralize, but there is this, the, the especially Christian ethos is there is objective truth. Christ is the truth. So we measure everything by that. And to round it out, when you look at situations like this, instead of going social conscience, instead of going, well, what's best in this moment? You look back to your principles, and it may not always be comfortable. It may not always be safe. But you'll stand consistent. You'll stand true to self, true to form, true to God, when you hold those principles or those foundations and you move forward on that. It's much better to have a risk, but know that you're being consistent, than to be become compromised or inconsistent just for safety, which is so fleeting, because there will be so many situations that will threaten your safety. And so you won't be able to just protect safety at this moment and now I'm okay. There will always be challenges to your safety. There will always be challenges to your level of risk that you're taking. And so wouldn't it be better to shirk safety to shirk peace and have peace and contentment with the Lord because you're seeking him for the wisdom and the truth. And you're walking that out with him, full faith that God's got me one way or another, and I trust him. I don't trust 
anything that the world is telling me, but I trust that the Lord will illuminate the truth. So, if you enjoy content like this, please, by all means, sign up with us, become a torchbearer, or at least click follow, click the notification bell, leave a comment, let us know anything you want us to discuss. If there's something that pops up, by all means, we'll cover it. But see you next time. Love you guys.